I'm B. Cody. And I'm Ashley. Whether you're remodeling your entire home or just sprucing up a room with a fresh coat of paint, we're going to show you how to do it right. This house is in pretty good shape, but there's one project that we have to tackle before we get to anything else. Look at this floor. It's terrible and we need to replace it. But it's not as scary as it looks, I promise. There are two common ways to build a house. The first is called slab on grade. A mold is built out of wood. All of the sewer and water lines are laid out within the mold. Reinforcement wire is added, and then the mold is filled with concrete. The second method is to build a house with a crawl space or basement. This house has a crawl space and sits about two feet off the ground on concrete blocks. The floor joists rest on top of the blocks. Plywood is then added to the top of the joist to create the subfloor. Some flooring can come in several materials. You have particle board, OSB board, untreated plywood, or untreated tongue and groove plywood. Before we repair anything, we need to figure out why this floor rotted in the first place. Subflooring rots due to moisture, but where did the moisture come from? Maybe there's a leak or something that was fixed in the past that we don't know about. If this damage was caused by a leaky water line, we'd probably find more rot near the kitchen sink or dishwasher. The floor isn't rotten under the window, so we can rule out a leaky window. And the attic spaces look dry. There aren't any signs of rotten wood up there. I'm pretty sure the moisture is coming from the ground. The lot that this house is on is a little low, so I'm thinking that underneath the house, it holds a little moisture all the time. Yeah, the summers here in Florida get really hot, so I bet that moisture is evaporating up into the subfloor. I totally agree. But some good news is, the two by eight floor joists are in great shape. I didn't see any signs of wood rot when I was crawling around down there. That's great, but how are we gonna minimize the amount of moisture in the crawl space? Well, for starters, we can install a crawl space fan to increase airflow and reduce the moisture down there. Right now, the water runs off of the roof to the ground directly next to the foundation. By adding gutters and downspouts, we'll be able to direct the water away from the house. We can also install a vapor barrier underneath the house. It's a plastic sheet which blocks moisture from collecting under the subflooring and the floor joists. All of these little fixes are really gonna help us with our moisture problem. But now it's time to get to work on the actual rotten floor. There's two ways that we can repair this floor. We could patch the existing hole with plywood, but getting the new subfloor to match up perfectly with the old subfloor is not something we wanna tackle. So what we're gonna do is take out these cabinets and completely demo these kitchen floors, which means we're gonna be starting from scratch, but that's a great thing. It will ensure that our floors are completely level. There's a lot of tools we could use to cut out this subfloor. In this case, we're gonna be using a circular saw. Before you start any demo, be sure you're wearing your safety gear. We've identified where the plumbing and electrical lines will be, but to be on the safe side, we're going to take it slow. We're going to cut back the subflooring a section at a time, use the pry bar to remove the subfloor and pull out any nails we find, and inspect the next section for plumbing and electrical. I started the demo by removing the rotten plywood. This stuff was so brittle, all I had to do was let the weight of my sledgehammer do the work. This part of the demo didn't even feel like work. It was actually a lot of fun. The tedious part was removing all of the nails from the floor joists. I don't know of a quick way to do this. You just have to rip the nails out one by one. The last thing we want to do is cut into the floor joists. So what we're going to do is measure the thickness of the subflooring and adjust our blade depth to match. Be sure to keep your hands out of the way of the blade while you're adjusting the depth. Cutting up the floor into small squares makes ripping them up and carrying them to the trash a lot easier, but this process still took a long time. Some parts of the floor actually had two layers of plywood to cut through and pry up. And I took it slow because cutting my leg on a rusty nail or having an accident with the circular saw wouldn't make Ashley very happy. After I cut out all of the subfloor, I used a reciprocating saw to clean up the edges of the flooring near the walls. And to get rid of the rotten subfloor beneath the hardwood, I removed several pieces of it to expose the rotten wood. Then, I set the blade depth of the circular saw to match the depth of the hardwoods and subfloor so I wouldn't cut into the floor joist. Then I used the existing edge of the hardwood as a guide to clean up the edge. After a little bit more demo of the rotten wood, we are ready for the next step. 
Now we have a huge hole in the floor we need to cover. We'll start by measuring the area to figure out how much plywood we're going to need. You can measure with a standard tape measure or use a laser tool like this. Looks like we have approximately 250 square feet to cover. Plywood comes in 4 foot by 8 foot sheets. So I'm thinking 8 pieces should work. But we can't just lay down plywood. We want to attach each side of the plywood to the substructure of the house. We need to add boards in between the floor joists to screw the new subfloor into. We're going to use 2x6 pressure treated lumber like this. We also want to make sure all the flooring joists are level. If they're not level, we'll either shim in pieces of lumber or add boards to level the floor joists. Looks like the floors are level, so it's finally time to lay down the subflooring. To prevent the floor from squeaking when you walk on it, we're going to add a bead of glue to each joist so the plywood subfloor doesn't separate later. I like to use two inch exterior deck screws on projects like this with a cordless impact driver. It's important to leave a 1 8 inch gap between each sheet to allow the wood to naturally expand during the seasons. We started out by laying down as many full size sheets of plywood as we could. It felt really good to cover up almost half of the floor without cutting a single piece of plywood. Well, we can't fit any more full sheets of plywood into this space. So we're going to have to start cutting pieces to fit into the spaces. It's kind of like one giant puzzle. Piece by piece, we applied the measurements from the floor to the uncut plywood, struck lines with a chalk box, and used a circular saw to make the cuts. After adding more glue to the floor joists, we dropped in the plywood and screwed it all down. See, that wasn't so scary. But it was a huge project. It was, and that's something to consider when doing home renovations like this. And there's no shame in hiring a professional to do the work. But if DIY is how you roll, now you know how to do it right. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit the like button and let us know in the comments any questions that you have. If you want to try out any of the tools we used in this video, we left links in the description below, as well as some links to additional articles to help you out with other flooring projects. And if you want to see more of our how-to videos, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned to the Lowe's YouTube channel.